Afternoon everyone, it's Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. Up on the allotment plot, doing a bit of experimenting, but at the same time, I thought a good opportunity to show you what I've got going on behind me and around me, which is the squash, or squash, courgettes, pumpkins. So uh, yeah, I thought, let's go and have a look, just see how they're doing. Right, so first off, try and ignore the fact that these are now showing signs of uh, powdery mildew. They are the uh, courgettes and marrows. A um, couple of different varieties. Got the plain green or green bush courgette going on there, which we've had absolutely loads, including some absolute monsters, because let's face it, we all forget about our courgettes until well until it's too late and uh, then we're left with things that are actually bigger than marrows um, then next to them i've got uh, a block of shooting star which you can make out some smaller ones there and they actually have traveled from the center all the way across to this outside as you can see more of, more formation there and from the centre all the way back through the middle which we ignore pumpkins for the moment so all the way through to there and so that is a variety called shooting star which um i've got to say have been absolutely amazing this year uh first time growing them and they have performed really well. What I would say is, as you can see how vigorous they are, what I would say is that next year, I'm gonna try growing it up some support to free up some of the ground. Um, then down here, got the marrow that is desperately trying to grow, although I think we're a bit late in the season for it to achieve much. Uh, that one should be better on, but um, again, only, had one row of it so as we are a family of four I literally planted three of each plant so three marrow three courgette shooting star and three green bush one of the green bush got eaten by slugs pretty early doors so that was the back corner lost that one and so out of the two we've had well absolutely stacks of courgette to the point where we've been giving it away to all the neighbors and anyone that turns up really same with the uh shooting star it's done absolutely amazing um flavor nice well sweet for a courgette produced an abundance of the crops but as you can see and as i've just said it goes absolutely crazy to the point where it's almost outgrowing a pumpkin so uh, definitely worth considering but probably not for that small space and then the marrows well we've had five marrows of good size and when I say good size probably about 18 inches in size so five of those um, I don't know about you but uh, marrows get a little bit boring so after the first two we gave away the others uh, right this here hopefully you remember is uh, planted up with my squash so again three varieties just done a block of four of each uh, type go through the pergola of runner beans look at these bad boys right so first squash here we've got are summer squash so um, or patty pan as a lot of people call them although there are slight differences and you see a few more forming there and down here and again we have had a lot of these fruits already again giving them away to neighbors but they are a good fruit and whilst you could eat them like that it's a little bit well bit pointless so what we've done to make it a bit more interesting is literally cut the top off it scoop out and use them 
a bit like you'd use the round squash and uh, fill inside with a, um, a nice mixture of different things. So uh, yeah, and as the name would suggest, being summer squash, they have been forming and ripening all summer long. So when I say all summer, realistically throughout, um, well, tail end of June, but certainly the whole of July and the whole of August, we've been eating those. So they are the summer squash in there. Next on, oh, you can see there's a few more summer squash there as well. And if we look hard enough, over in the back, let me get a foothold here. My next block, which is a block of four, um, ignore the, well, I'll say, ignore the uh, chrysanthemums because my little experiment failed miserably and I had envisaged having a line of each in between to uh, give me cut flower and make use of the space. But as you can see, the um, squash have basically pulled them all over and uh, all they're going to be fit for is cutting material end of season, but lesson learned. Anyway, next batch we've got our yukikuris, which come under winter squash. And they look like that. So yukikuri or onion squash, um, as they're commonly called, or Japanese squash, and onion squash because of the shape. And you can see that, again, they've formed everywhere. Although that one there looks like it's been uh, swallowed up by the, well, a couple been swallowed up by the ground that is a result of the moles. Um, thankfully, moles don't like squash, but there's absolutely loads of them forming all the way through there. And we have actually eaten a couple already. And actually, they were really tasty. And it's one of those things where, you know what, you read uh, in the magazines or you read online and it says that uh, you, know, you can only harvest something at a certain point in the year and they got to be a certain look or color. And as you can see, these are well ripened. You know, they're dark orange in coloration, borderline red and they got a nice hard skin to them so they are ripe you know and when you have a little read it says that you can't harvest until october but um they're not going to change so you might as well pull some off if you need them so long as they're looking like that uh, pull them off and then oh let me get out of there that will actually encourage uh, potentially a few more to to ripen and form so let me just go back through the, the tunnel and uh, I'll just show you what I mean so obviously that one there nice and ripe that's good to go whereas that is how they kind of start and I noticed one on the back over here if you can see that there we are so that's one I'm trying to get into the neighboring plot looks like there might be a rotten one just below it actually and so they start off as that um golden yellow orange and then go to the the deep orange red and it's at the deep orange red good to go you know sometimes uh i think you've just got to ignore what you you might read because we all have different climates and down here in uh, Essex we have had it so hot and so dry that um, things have been growing and ripening and going over at uh, well a, a different stage to where they'd normally be. So that takes care of the yukikuris that are in the middle so we've done the summer squash. So now to my favourite really, family favourite, butternut squash. So butternut squash, uh, four plants again, here. Grown them a couple of times. Uh, wouldn't say I'm expert on it. Last year, uh, only had a couple of, of uh, fruits. Year before, did quite well. Only ever grown them in containers. 
this year obviously grown at the allotment one thing to bear in mind is that uh, butternut squash are a master of disguise can you see any because they're quite difficult to spot until you kind of get over the top of them yeah and then you start seeing loads of them yeah look they're everywhere absolutely everywhere there we are, everywhere we look, but at low level, butternut squash. And they're all warming, and so you can see we've got juvenile there, which is where you can kind of feel the difference. So they have a almost a cold feel to them when they're juvenile stage. Well, let me show you very first off. So that's the first off there. That's the babies there. and normally if i was growing them at home in containers then i would have been taking off some of these and i would have only had one fruit per stem but in the ground uh, they're just going crazy and there's definitely enough food and moisture within here because i'm watering um, every two or three days and They've had plenty of manure and indeed I've done a top dressing of manure so there's plenty of nutrients so I'm not worried about getting too many fruits forming. So anyway we go from very baby juvenile stage to next stage where it has this sort of cool feel to it and then that is the almost ripened and it has a different texture. It, be, it does start becoming smoother, more silky in in feel, I guess. And as they're ripening, so too does the bottom end start to changing as well. And that bottom is where the the flower was originally. Uh, I don't know that I've got anything that's more mature than that, to be honest. Um, but they will go. No, I don't think you'll have, but they will go a slightly more brown uh, coloration than uh, than these ones are already. And it's when they've kind of gone maybe um, another shade or two darker. And where you can't see, well, it's always a telltale actually, when you can't see this veining anymore, that is normally when they're ready. And they were kind of sound hollow which that doesn't at the moment so they kind of sound hollow and you won't see the veining and then that would be a sign that they're ripe. Right then we've done courgettes, we've done marrows, we've done squash on to the other types of squash which are the pumpkins. Um, this bed was a bit of my experimental almost three sisters type but it was more you know, two sisters, two and a half, two sisters and a stepsister type of approach. So I've got my sweet corn going up, which were meant to be for the shade. Got my beans, which were meant to be for nitrogen. And then the pumpkins, which were, you know, meant to kind of go that way and onto the pathway and um, not too much further, really. Uh, as you can see from now i mean they go all the way around where you can see the orange glow over there so in this section here uh i put in three pumpkin big macs not not for any reason you know i wasn't intending to grow three of them but it was more um just in case yeah because normally you have a pumpkin plant fail so um, I put in three on the basis that one would fail and actually they haven't. So um, so Big Max, I have one there, which is pretty big. I got, that is also Big Max. Then there's Big Max around the other side that we'll see. And then this is, whoop, let's take the zoom off. This is, the other Big Max. This one here I put a bit of a cover over just to try and stop it getting scorched as uh, when that was forming 
was when we, well, when they're all forming, but more so that one, was when we had the really hot spell and things were just getting crisped up. And then um, this is also Big Macs and this section here belongs to the plant that that one's on. Ordinarily, if you're growing big pumpkins, you just have one pumpkin form per plant. But because of the heat, that one there, well, all of them just started turning orange. And so at that stage, kind of knew I wasn't going to get the size I wanted. So just figured that, hey, you know, if I can't get any bigger, I might as well get more. So that's what I've done with that. Then over here, uh, these ones are um, Dill's Atlantic Giant, which again, I kind of hoped that I would get bigger and better from. But um, again, you know, the weather has conspired against me and uh, I'm left with, well, that, which is a fair size and that, which is, well, reasonably, um, reasonable amount bigger, not massively bigger. As you can see by the, the setup of the um, pallet and enclosure, I'd anticipated that I'd be uh, much bigger than that. But anyway first year of trying to grow Dills Atlantic so can't complain too much and as you can see it's um, well about two foot across so it's still a reasonable attempt but um, we should see and uh, as you can see like all the foliage has got flattened here because of the um, powdery mildew on the courgette but let's not detract from what we're talking about So, that's the end of it. You know, that's a little tour around doing the uh, squashes and, well, squash family, we call it, or cucurbits, as they should be called. Uh, and a little chat on them. So, um, if you've got any questions, then uh, send them to me. i obviously always try and do my best to answer them for you. If you uh, like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the reminder button so you don't miss out on future videos I'm doing. I should say, as always, go and have some fun, enjoy being outdoors, and let's face it, when the weather's like this, a little bit cooler, but still warm, I don't think you can beat it, can you? So, till next time, my now you go, bye for now.